On this week's episode, we have an inventory check with Kevin. Got a black ceramic Daytona, 24,000. Panda Daytona, $28,000. Adrian is working a Richard Meal deal with the new guy, Dito. You know what? I think it's time. I don't think I want to eclipse a half a million bucks. Okay, there's a lot of options there. Got him probably what I would say the sexiest watch set alive from Ulysse Nardine. Wait till you see this thing. Adrian just talked to me about budgeting. <sighs> Why is he silent? Are we selling him as a set? Yeah. It's the only set in existence. And super rare paddock, the phone call that I had an episode ago. You're looking anywhere from three hundred and fifty to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars on that one. Holy sh that actually came in. Well, we finally got the watch in and it's super rare. I ask you guys this every week. We put a lot of effort and energy and time into creating these episodes. So if you are an existing subscriber, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment your thoughts below. If you're new to the channel, Take the time to subscribe to the channel, you won't regret it. The president has arrived. Well, not the president, but the Daytona has arrived. Well, the president has arrived too. Exactly, so that being said, we've got the car dated, date of election, November 5th, 2024. It's pretty badass, actually. Congratulations to you. May this be a reminder for yourself that your candidate won. This is a trophy for you that you will never sell and pass down to your children. How's it look? Sexy, beautiful, <laughs> refined, expensive, platinum. Daytona. <laughs> I love you, dude. That's awesome. All right, man. Yeah, really Congratulations, you. and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, Approximately speaking, you're looking anywhere from three hundred and fifty to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars on that one. Oh, holy! Um. Hi. Good morning. Can you tell me what is the price of this? Can you bring up the steel conjure paddock that just came in, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I love the enthusiasm. Absolutely. Absolutely. The accent and the enthusiasm, yeah. it just, it's great. <laughs> mm, you're the best. The, your, your enthusiasm. Your enthusiasm is uh, I tried to am, am, amazing. You know what's more amazing? The fact that this watch is not just a conjure, it's also turning tropical. It doesn't mean anything to you, but yeah. it means a lot to me. Thank you. My pleasure. So when I talked to the guy on the phone, um, you, uh, he obviously, he sent me a very blurry picture where I didn't realize that A, the dial was turning tropical, and B, the logo is actually super crisp. I'm not gonna disclose what we're going to pay this gentleman for this watch, we already had that conversation, but um, this is gonna go up for sale for 450,000. The gentleman got about triple the estimate that he felt that the watch was worth. Of course, today's day and age of digital world, people still sometimes have no idea what they have, especially if you're not a watch person. But I think he he Googled stainless steel paddock, a bunch of Nautiluses came up. He saw some 5711s that are trading anywhere from 80 to 120. I'm sure he saw a couple of 3700s. In fact, let's see what happens when you Google stainless steel. A guy thought that a... His watch is worth anywhere from 100 to 150 thousand, whatever it is that he said last last phone call. Obviously, the Kanjar logo. There's only about 12 of these in the world, right? No, uh, with the gold it was about six, and the white gold was about three. And the fact, while most dealers may try to play the game that hey, this dial is messed up, so I'm going to pay you less. No, this dial is actually turning tropical, so it's actually a plus to the watch. Uh, the appeal, with, when it comes to vintage, sometimes it's all about appeal, and. Uh, you know, it's what really sings to you, and it's very hard to explain unless you have something else to compare it to. You take two of the same vintage timepieces and you say, hey, well, I feel like this one is more appealing than the next, and in this particular watch, the fact that the dial is turning the way it's turning. And you can see, actually, if you look closer, these dials turn the way this is, if they tend to sit somewhere for a long time, actually in the dark rather than in the light. Notice the marker at five o'clock and here. So somebody took this watch, the watch either was running or was already stopped or stopped at 5.08 p.m. or a.m. and that's how it sat for a long time so you can actually see the hands, see the markers from the hands and that's super appealing. You don't see this very often so basically the watch sat like so. Now I didn't, I didn't record, I didn't record uh, the phone call of talking to the gentleman, but uh, the deal is done, the watch is ours, and it's gonna go up for sale. Guys, we have a case of watches here, roughly around 300,000. Let's go through them, break down some quick pricing. Hopefully this helps you when you're going to look for your watch. Got a black ceramic Daytona, something like this. I actually just sold one of these. 
the market has really came down on this watch. I know probably a year ago they were selling for twenty seven, twenty eight thousand. Right now you could pick this watch up in the year we have it for around twenty four thousand. Um, moving over to the heavy hitter, the Panda Daytona. Everybody loves this, guys. We remember when they were thirty three thousand, thirty two thousand. Right now you could pick this watch up around roughly twenty eight thousand dollars. Moving on, going to a, a GMT Master, one of my favorite watches. This is other known as the Lefty or the Sprite on Jubilee. Uh, you could pick that watch up right now. Probably I sold my last one for 17000 so 17000 Then when it comes to this classic Fusion Hublot, I love this with the factory uh, bezel. You could pick this watch up for roughly 17000 All right, and lastly, we got this Hublot Big Bang Unico. You could pick this watch up for roughly about $13,000. million dollar companies I, let, let me let me ask you what do you what do you do to keep yourself and your company fresh and new so it doesn't feel like you're doing the same goddamn thing every single day for one i'm on social media so i get to record fun things for you guys to watch but let me ask you a question because you know the terminology burned out it can mean different things in different places right so for example for my sales guys you know they get burned out uh the minute they start thinking about what they did last week or uh, what they did a month ago, how good last month was, or how, how good last week was versus today, for example, right? And then when things go down, they tend to look backwards, and I always tell them, hey, you know, it's always a new day, right? Every day you wake up, you start from scratch. It doesn't matter how much you sold or didn't sell the day before. It's literally a 24-hour period. Uh, when it comes to uh, logistics, for example, right? So I talk to my people down in logistics as well. They sometimes have days where it's like, oh, my God, I got 500 packages that are going out. I have a big shipment of jewelry that came in. And because we have a process of inputting everything and photographing and so on and so forth, they can qu quickly get behind. And I tell them to that, it's all about following process that we set forth. And the best part about it is that when I set these processes in place, I keep things in mind like, oh, well, how could an individual in a particular department get burned out, right? And what I do is I come up with a process that's most efficient, obviously, for the company, but also efficient for them. I have the heaviest Roman buy ever. What exactly would you like me to do with that right now? You're not ready for this, are you? Adrian just talked to me about budgeting. Oh, man, how do I get this out? Um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna take a few people. This thing is thirty five pounds. Ah, uh, move. <sighs> okay, that's a start. Do you know who Manara is? No. Manara is an Italian artist. Furthermore, he's a comic book artist. Some of the comic books go for like tens of thousands of dollars, and he's what's known like a racy. By racy, I mean it's like it's sexual, but it's not dirty. What, what, I guess like soft porn. Hi, Santa. You want to see some soft porn? <laughs> How are you? How you doing? <laughs> hey, buddy. Make sure whatever's in there, eat them so we can file an insurance claim. Are you ready for this? Yeah. <sighs> Why is he silent? Are we selling them as a set? Yeah. It's the only set in existence. So when I was at Nardan, I actually saw this box in their museum, and I'm like, are the watches in there? They're like, no, the watches are all sold out. Because remember, they only made 10 each. So there's only 10 sets. And even Nardine doesn't have them. And you know how I said he's a little bit racy, but it's like sexy, but not dirty. Lexi, what do you think? <laughs> Borderline? They're cool, though. These are the same exact ones? I don't get it. No. No, they're not. No, they're, they're all different. Oh, she, so they're this, all different. she's just like swimming around. I just finished shark. doing the, I just finished doing well, the video. Can you put them in chronological order of where she starts <laughs> and where she finishes? Because she's right here. When, she you say, when you say she finishes, is there a pun in there? Or no, where? she's swimming. Dirty old man. Well, oh, so far cool. since they came out, we only had one of them, which was this one that was sold separately, if you remember. And nobody in the world has this set. Okay, very cool. It's a quarter million bucks, but it's 16 and a half kilos. So it's about 35 oh, pounds. Damn. Oh, my yeah. Gosh. yeah, it's right about there. I mean, we've had some heavy boxes, but this is... Wait, there's more! Okay, you're not screaming at me, so that's a good sign. <laughs> this is not the only Roma buy. I put it back. What's the one currently produced artwork that you can't get that's all sold out? Which one? You stumped me. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And now I'm going to have a dilemma. I mean, it's sold out. They're sold out. You can't get them. Okay, you can get them. They're, they're selling over list. You cannot get one. Okay, anyway, I'm not going to wrap this because it's a pain in the ass. This was like the first artwork they came out with. And the reason it sold out instantly because it actually looks more like a watch. It's not that crazy. And it's also extremely wearable and comfortable. So the dilemma is, do we sell this or do I keep this? You sell it. Of course, Adrian said we sell it. Right now. Mr. Can't get them over list or can't get them at list. Sell it over list. Okay, Mr. Skeptical. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you, do you not feel the same way about certain German watchmaker that you feel is 
it and somewhat even better quality-wise in terms of uh, being better than perhaps paddock. What does one thing have to do with the other? I don't know. I'm saying, we like longa, right? Yeah, I like, I like sushi too. It doesn't mean that the Toyotas are good. Okay, so my question is to you is, outside of, outside of longa, what's me, another, what's, yeah, can mute, we turn that yeah, off? Yeah, let me mute President Trump for a second. Uh, <laughs> what's another German watchmaker that you would give as much respect to as Longa Zuna? German watchmaker? Mm -hmm. A recent newcomer, independent, revived company, a woman that used to run Longa now runs that company. Hint, hint. Maurice Grossman. Oh. I've been extremely bullish about these guys. This is a watch I want you to actually loop inside and out and see. I think the finish is a second to none. There, I, I, was, I was at watch time a couple years ago. There was a panel of independents. Not going to mention any name, but... This is blue line. This Right but it, but, in, but in the reality, but in reality, that uh, out of the six on a panel, the true, true independent on there was actually Maurice Grossman because they do all that stuff in house. They do all the hand finishing. They do everything. The quality on that watch is insane, and the price level on them is um, extremely reasonable. No, it's incredible. Engraving, the finishing here, incredible. Look at the dial, though. Look how beautiful that dial is. It's I mean, and it it's a nice size too. Spectacular, spectacular watch. Spectacular. Love it. I love the watch. It's great, great, great piece. Okay, we're going to cut here. <laughs> the level of enthusiasm here is... Uh, you, want uh, me, you want me to lie? People don't know me for being a liar. I see what I see. That's true. So the fact that you said that you like the watch makes like me feel it. better about my Roman purchase. This set is for a very unique client. It's somebody that's going to appreciate horology and history that comes from Ulysse Nardon. It's somebody that's going to appreciate the artist Manara and the risque artwork that he's created in comic books over the years. So this hits a lot of points when it comes to people collecting th certain things. To be honest with you, it's up to me. I'd probably keep it. It's certainly risque themed and it's also risque by. This is what Roman does. <laughs> Step into a world where time becomes desire. The Ulysses Nardian Erotic Classico Collection, crafted in collaboration with the legendary Italian artist Milo Manara, is a bold fusion of timekeeping, precision and provocative art. Each dial is a masterpiece, where the elegant Swiss mechanics of Ulysses Nardine meet the sensual, intricately drawn figures that have defined Manara's work. With every glance, you're pulled deeper into a world of forbidden pleasures, where luxury meets the thrill of the erotic. We got about $2 million here in watches. Now, what we're looking at here is Purnell's, and I think the watch industry and community as a whole, and the general sentiment is that there's a lot of redundancy in the market. Brands seem to produce the same thing over and over, maybe adjusting movement or adjusting uh, case color or dial color, whatever the case may be. So everybody's kind of more or less looking for the next Richard Meal, which is like saying I'm looking for the next Michael Jordan. It's always uh, never a successful thing, but I think if one brand really has a shot at it, it's Purnell. That's why we've been going heavy with them. We've sold about f five working on the sixth one in the past two months, which is a lot of them considering how much they make. Each piece here, double tourbillon, some are piece unique, some are, you know, out of three. So it really boils down to loving and admiring and respecting and understanding the complications of double sphere tourbillons and essentially whatever color that the client wants, you know, to match their hyper cards or to match their lifestyle. So super excited about these. The retail price on them all is all like six, seven hundred thousand and we're selling them anywhere from three fifty to five hundred depending on what the watch is. So they're still traded at a significant discount. And I believe that moving forward, there is a chance, and never say watches are investment, but there is a chance that you're not going to be able to get your hands on these and they're going to retain pretty good value. Which one's your favorite and which one do you think will be the most popular? Well, so my favorite for, for me personally, I mean, it's, it's always going to be the white on white. I always like stuff that's white on white, whether it's the RM, you know, Bubba Watson or the 3801, which is kind of close to, it's kind of got like that white NTPT case, all white. It's just, it's just so sick, so clean. It fits any, any type of attire that you're wearing you know obviously this green is dope but you need, i feel like you need like a lamborghini or a koenigsegg in this color to to really pull this off so uh nevertheless super excited about these gonna get them put into the system and get them sold so it is november 5th uh today and month is slowly starting off i sold two things well i actually sold three i sold a platinum daytona sold a 5711 white and green always perpetual and a submariner i sold a few things already but what you guys don't see is sort of some of the issues that go on with what, what i'm doing so two sales resulted in some nice profit um, but 
I made a mistake for both of them within one day. So, 5711 blue. Uh, I sold this yesterday. Um, I sold it for a pretty decent price. We made some good profit. The issue is, is I sold it to a wholesaler. I underquoted it in my opinion. I would have rather sold it to a retail client for that price that I sold it for. Um, I mean, I can just tell you, I sold it for 85,000. Underquoted like crazy. I should have sold it for well over 90,000 probably. Um, I made a mistake. I was not really paying attention on WhatsApp. I sent out a quote uh, that wasn't really too accurate and I sort of had to commit to, to my word on that. So unfortunately, but fortunately this is sold, um, but still it was a mistake that I made and we left a lot of money on the table. So that's one of one of the mistakes. The second mistake is actually this one. So Waste Perpetual Green Dial. Um, I wouldn't, you wouldn't think this is a big mistake, but I took a 36 millimeter Explorer one on trade, thinking it was a 39 millimeter reference. So I sold this for 9,200. I took $2,200 as a difference in the trade. Um, I valued the trade for that Explorer at 7,000, thinking it was a 39, turns out it was a 36 millimeter. So um, that watch, just to put that into perspective, is around $5,000 maybe. 5,500, 6,000 around there. And it's an older year, so that was a, a costly mistake. Um, there's about a, I mean, there's about a $2,000 spread there in pricing. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take this, all the profit and more out of this watch uh, and roll it into the trade. So we're making absolutely nothing on this, actually losing on this probably. And just to lower the cost on the trade that I made a mistake on. So. I don't want to say it's a waste of a sale, but it basically is a waste of a sale. There's no money in it. Um, and we're barely going to make any money in the trade. But another case where I have to stay true to my word, especially for a retail client, I'm not going to go back and cancel the deal just because I made a mistake and I wasn't paying attention. So there's two instances yesterday that I wasn't paying attention, made some costly mistakes, lost some money on the table, and overpaid for a trade that I shouldn't have taken. So that is it. And on to the next one. I'm going to Miami tomorrow, so I will do some deals out there, Pop. Hey, Jim, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Good. So I'm interested in um, in a 22 or 23. Okay. Maybe like unworn or almost unworn. Mm -hmm. I think that that's probably what I'll wind, you know, wind up. I don't, do you have anything in stock or do you have to go, I mean, what do you have any, pay, you know? Uh, I recently did, we recently sold. These things come in and out. It's one of our most popular sellers. Uh, so we're talking Oyster Flex, not on bracelet, right? Yeah, All I right. think it's nicer on the, you know. I 100% agree with you. The yeah. ceramic bezel and just get more wear out of it on the Oyster Flex strap. Like it's one of the best things I think Rolex did in a long time. Yeah, I mean, I have a Daytona John Mayer anyway. So I have a yellow one, that's why I wanted it. Oh, okay, yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I mean, um, look around, you have my number, but mm -hmm. I want like mint, either mint mm -hmm. or or new mint. No problem whatsoever. Yeah. All right, give me give me a, give me a few days to, to basically just check all around the world and see what I can come up with. Okay, we'll good go enough. That. And, you know, you have my number and uh, let's see if we can do something. Sounds good. Appreciate the call. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hey, Jeffrey, this is Dito from Luxury Bazaar. Did I catch you at a good time? Yeah. You did. How are you? Good, good. Beautiful, brother. So I was just speaking with my um, senior client advisor here. His name is Adrian. He'll walk us through everything, okay? That sounds Beautiful. absolutely perfect. Let me just, hold on. Let me just put you on speaker in my office. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Take your time. <laughs> Go ahead. Jeffrey, how are you? This is Adrian. Hi, Adrian. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, so Dito kind of walked me through a little bit um kind of exactly what you're looking for you mentioned you're looking for some richard meals potentially some 1103s that is correct okay um look the first thing that we always ask in terms of stuff like richard meal is do you have any in your collection do you have anything similar in your collection what is the budget i uh, yeah I, I don't i i've got three Patex, I've got four APs, I've got about a dozen Rolexes, mm -hmm. I've got some IWCs, some Hublots. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what I've got, but, um, you know, I work in logistics with F1, and 
when you're around F1, you mm-hmm. see a lot of you see a lot of RMs. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, it's one of those things I said, you know what, I think it's time. So I kind of made a promise to myself before the end of the year, I'm going to get one. I've, I've followed you and your team um, on YouTube. And you guys have been wonderful about educating um, me over, over, the t- over time mm-hmm. about watches in general. And I get to see the style in which you work and sometimes the levity that goes along with it. So I figured I'd reach out. Great, and, appreciate uh, that. And and talk to you guys. Great. I mean, we'd be more than happy to uh, to welcome you to the to the RM Club because obviously I've been on record many times saying how much I love the brand. I've seen the brand go from you know from way back when to where it is now, and it's it's been a it's been a hell of a journey, I should say. And I'm I'm you know I'm deeply passionate about the brand. I love all, pretty much all their watches. So be happy to help you. Now, there yeah, is a lot... A budget, from a budget yeah. standpoint, I, I, I don't think I want to eclipse a half a million bucks. Okay, there's a lot of options there. There are a lot of okay. options there. That's, that's, kind of where, that's kind of where I am. My recommendation would be, especially, not only for RM, but I would say for Patek Philippe and Audemars Piquet, even, not, not that we're, we're talking about Patek or Audemars today, but just in general right now, I like to look at things for my clients that are no longer in production. Because what happens when things are no longer in production, well, you can't produce anymore. Therefore, the volatility isn't, uh, the risk isn't as high in terms of volatility. In other words, it's, it's less likely that stuff is going to fall down further, right? So I agree I w- with you. So, I w- so there's a rarity to it. Exactly. I know Dito walked in. He mentioned uh, specific models 1103. He said something about 1103. Then he said something red and then white devil. So that's why I wanted to get you on the phone just to just to confirm exactly the, the models yeah, that perhaps you were eyeing. Uh, I, I tell you, from an aesthetic standpoint, I was sure. going to talk aesthetics first. Yes. Aesthetics, the RM11, the White Demon. Yeah, okay. All right, so that's number one. Right. Number two would be the RM1103 mm-hmm. McLaren. Mm-hmm. And the third, and and for whatever reason, it's hanging in there in my, my mind. It's probably the least favorite of it would be the 11 Red Demon. Okay, so so the, so we, the 1103 would be the McLaren, right? And then the RM11, the previous generation, or the yep. original Felipe Massa, would be the White yep. Demon or the Red Demon. Correct. I mean, for me personally, the yep. 11 White Demon, I remember when that watch first came out. Oh, my goodness. It is absolutely gorgeous and super, super rare. I mean, it's limited edition. It's limited to either 50 or 150. I don't remember off the top of my head, but that watch yeah, is 50, 50, 50 pieces. That, that piece is yeah. absolutely insane. But then again, I sold a lot of 1103s, and it's it's, it's, such, a, it's such a handsome watch. It's a very fun watch. You switch, out, you switch out the strap for a black one or an orange one. You really can't go wrong. Now, the idea is, is with the 1103s, especially today, 11, uh, 1103s or other models, people seem to want the NTPT. That's kind of the hallmark and trademark of what Richard Mille stands for today. And given the fact that you're around racing a lot, right, that is the quintessential piece. Anything in NTPT. Yep. Does that make sense? Not precious metal. Yeah, right. yeah absolutely. Because right. that was part of my follow-up question is, yeah. you know, are the ceramics more popular? Is it NTPT or is it uh, precious metal? NTPT, it NTPT, NTPT would be number one. And, but then again, there are, there, there, there are your cases with white demons or anything in white ceramic. Obviously, it's very popular. Bubble Watsons, all this stuff. But overall, on average, NTPT, that, that's where you want to be. Not to mention... Once you put an NTPT on, you'll never want to take it off. It's it's remarkably comfortable. It's 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 a sexy piece. Let me ask you another question. Yeah. What about from a color perspective? What is because part of my thing is this. I'm not, it is an investment because you know if you're going to spend a half a million dollars, I mean mm-hmm. you're you're investing something in a watch. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking for the gain. It's not that. I'd like to protect my investment and understand from your professional opinion Mm -hmm. in in partnering with you on something like this is saying, what would be the least downside, you know? So, Um, uh, is there a color perspective? You told me from uh, a material standpoint what is probably most popular. How about from a color perspective? Look, I think in in order to identify 
um, you know, how safe an investment is. We have to know what the en entry point is, right? So, you know, if you buy a McLaren today for 600000 which is way over market, then I'm going to tell you, no, it's not a good buy, right? So in terms of liquidity, so if you look at from an 1103 standpoint, right, you have the all red one, you have the all black one, which yeah. is which the black one and the 1103 are quite similar because they're both black NTPD cases, whereas one is black, you can kind of wear with everything, and then one's black and orange, right? So that, that you, have the, you have those two in all black. Then you have a rose gold TI, which is a rose gold t case in titanium size. You have a full rose gold, which is a brick, and I don't think that's what we're looking for. And then you have a regular 1103 TI. And then you have a few other special editions. But at market prices, if, if today you paid average market price for any one of those pieces, the most liquid one, would I would think, would be the 1103 McLaren because it's the most in demand. Okay, and that's 500 pieces, correct? Correct, yeah. It's funny, selling on a Richard meal for a new salesperson has always been, I don't want to call it a KPI or a goal, but usually what happens is when you do sell your first Richard meal, you first get that first big sale, that first big commission, and a huge confidence boost, if you will. I'm really hoping the deal closes for Dito because it will be a good confidence push, if you will. Not easy to sell a six-figure watch. But with that said, Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next week.